How are you doing? I'm fine, I'm fine. I'm having a wonderful show. It's a good show, isn't it? Um, first question, um, should we talk a bit about the work you're doing with DC at the moment on the new 52? Very exciting. Um, uh, particularly Demon Knights. Can you tell us a bit about the comic and sort of the themes in it and generally? Oh yes, absolutely. Demon Knights is my medieval fantasy comic in the DC universe in the New 52. It's basically what was happening in the same universe as Gotham City and Metropolis in the year 900 or so. Um, so it's got a, lot, a bunch of DC's immortal characters and its magic characters. And Etrigan the Demon, who used to speak in rhyme all the time but no longer does because I just thought that was ridiculous. Right. And, um, and I just envisaged him being in a big battle scene and having to shout, Oh, look out for that terrible flying thing before it kills us all with its wing. <laughs> and, you know, him pausing to create nice little iambic quatrains might leave him and his fellows in danger, I felt. So, yes. I see, yes. Mm. And Etrigan, um, that's, a, that's an old character, isn't it? That's a sort of DC character. A Jack Kirby character, originally. Okay, fantastic. And the other characters, um, they were sort of... A lot of them were made up by you, weren't they? Yes. Really? Um, we've got um, four previously existing characters and three new ones. Okay. And uh, Vandal Savage, who is this extraordinary immortal caveman. His dad was a Neanderthal. He can't remember his mum. And he's living forever for reasons he doesn't know. And he's played by Brian Blessed. Wow. So you know, um, you know what Brian Blessed, not just his bellowy dialogue, not just the Brian Blessed we know now, but that lovely I Claudius Brian Blessed with his little precise bits of, that's the, the voice I have in my head for Vandal Savage. Fabulous. Yeah. Uh, do you prefer um, kind of taking a character that's already established, iconic, because um, I know you've done some work for sort of Batman and characters like that. Um, do you prefer to have taking on that mantle or, um, or making up your own characters? Um, I think a bit of both. I really, there's something about being able to say, I've written Superman, I've written Batman and Robin. Yeah. There's, that's lovely. I was at a pub quiz in my home village, and um, a question came up, um, what superhero said, and it was from Action yeah. 900. And I put, I put my hand up and said, <laughs> I, I, I wrote that. <laughs> you must have and, blown their mind. Well, uh, no, actually, my, 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 the people down my local pub don't believe what I say. <laughs> I, I had the Vatican astronomer down for um, a pint and a pub quiz the other night. And, wow. I, and, and they said, who's this chap? And I said, he's, he's the lead astronomer of the Vatican, best mates with the Pope, you know, and they went, sure he is, Paul. So when I put up my hand and said, <laughs> that I wrote that dialogue for Superman, they went, sure you did, Paul. They just nodded. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your pub quizzes sound amazing. Um, brilliant. Well, I'm interested because you're quite a political man, aren't you? Oh, you, yes. um, you know, you wear your politics on, the sli on your sleeve. Do you, do you bring that to your comics? Do you bring that to your writing? Do you like to put that in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think politics is life, life is politics. I think this whole English thing of, oh, we've got nothing to do with politics. Yes, you have. You've just decided to be a victim of it rather than taking part in it. And um, so I do represent in the comics, yeah. but hopefully not in a way which... Uh, Russell T. Davis always said that a writer should be... Um, watching the parade and not leading it. Okay. And so I think you can feel a point of view in my comics, like um, the Demon Knight's current quest yes. is to make sure a lesbian wedding happens. Wow. And, um, <laughs> That's other men. <laughs> how, how, how are they going to do it? Um, well, <laughs> how they're going to do it is by um, taking the body of Merlin, which is not quite dead, back to Avalon to retrieve his soul, which they'll then put back in the body, allowing the two betrothed princesses who rule the city of Albacera to create their new Camelot and thus finally become married. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of a roundabout way of doing it. Yeah, and, and probably a more interesting way of doing it than just sort of... Like, like you say, just sort of doing it in the obvious way and saying your politics. You write I, it into a story. Well, absolutely. I, I was really pleased when Barack Obama got behind the Demon Knights promotional campaign in the same week it came out. I thought, fantastic. That'll do. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> you must have swayed him. Um, you talked a little bit about Russell T. Davies. Um, obviously, you're a, a brilliant Doctor Who writer. Um, well, there's nothing obvious about it. You have to take a vote. <laughs> it's obvious to us, definitely. Um, any more plans to write for Doctor Who? Um, no. No? No. Yeah. What about TV in general? Would you go back I, to... I, there was a very curt, though, and that might sound like I, I, I'm being nasty about the show, and I'm not. I'm just... Um, 
I've got stuff to do. And I'm always available for selection by Doctor Who, but I don't think it's going to happen in the near future. OK. Um, I'm interested, because you're, you're, you know, you're a very multi-talented man. You, um, you write for TV. You also you know, write novels. Um, was comic something you always wanted to do, or was it something you found out that you were good at? I have Having... always wanted to write comics. Ever since I was eight, and my dad put into my hands a copy of Avengers Weekly, with them finding Captain America in the front and scary Steve Ditko, Doctor Strange in the back. Yeah. And um, I think he wanted to read it, which is why he bought it for me. <laughs> and, but my reading age leapt up, you know, two grades in the afternoon it took me to get through that comic because Stan Lee, you know, I was the only kid in the playground who knew what a base defiler was. And um, so I've been addicted to them ever since. Yeah. And actually they are the hardest form to get into. I, I got into comics finally, to, into American comics, and this is a way which anybody who's hoping to get into comics can easily copy. Um, Mark Miller uh, emailed me and said, I really liked your Doctor Who episode last night, would you like to work for Marvel Comics? So, you know, it's, it's a route anybody can follow, really. <laughs> so long as you have Mark Miller's email address. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Amazing. Well, I'm going to open um, the questions out to the floor in a second. Um, one more question, actually. Um, do you have any advice for young writers, yeah. um, particularly sort of young writers wanting to get into those big sort of you know, BBC shows or once again comics? Um, how, I mean, how did you start out? Um, I started out actually winning a competition. Um, I got a play on the BBC uh, when I was a student, and. Um, by winning, by coming to the last eight of a BBC comp talent contest. But, um, so there's stuff like that. But I'd say, write and write and write, and I have a sentence, actually, which kind of sums it up. Um, it is your job to seek out harsh criticism of your work and change because of it. Ah. And you won't get your mum to give you <laughs> harsh criticism. I, I've said that, and people have said, oh, my mum gives me harsh criticism. I think, oh, my God, what must <laughs> that be like? But actually... I, I should mention the novel. Um, yeah. I have a, a novel coming out on December the 6th from Tor Books, the enormous um, British SF and fantasy company. And it's coming out in Britain and the States as well. It's called London Falling. It's um, an urban fantasy. It's basically the Sweeney do Buffy. Um, a bunch of modern, uh, hardcore, undercover uh, metropolitan police people um, who encounter the supernatural and feel they have to deal with it using real police methods and tactics. And I think if anybody's like my Doctor Who work, this is the same sort of thing. It's very characterful, it's full of emotion, um, there's all sorts of horrors. Um, we've got a quote on the front from Ben Aronovich, Brilliant. which basically says, this is a bit like what I wrote, Ben Aronovich. <laughs> and, um, We've got a couple of other really nice quotas promised to us, which I can't talk about yet. And um, the cover to that, we will be showing to the world on the internet on Tuesday, which I'm very pleased about, very, very proud of. And it's coming out on December the 6th. Thank you for asking again about that. <laughs>